concept of uh, resources, and how much do you guys do, because you talk about work a lot together as peers, but do you do a lot of work collectively in terms of sharing resources for, I mean, from marketing to faculty? I'm just thinking, because there's a group among that- Among the Yeah, amongst the programs that, I mean, These I know- kind of things, yes, but not, not certainly sharing faculty. Right, saying like there's certain intro level courses where instead of saying we're gonna, there aren't effect, I mean, I know, there's, there's a group called London Hire, and it's sort of an interesting, we've worked, we followed them and um, they start out simplest thing, which was every university in London wants to recruit international students. So they all sent out, you know, their marketing team to take a photo of the bus and big bang and the phone booth, and they're like, why are we wasting all this money? Let's just do one, collect it, and we'll customize it. But it's evolved into sort of a collective where they'll actually bid on stuff collectively and share resources collectively. So for example, they, gone out and um, they actually did their lab space and are doing the drug testing for the Olympics, you know, all the universities in the Olympics. Um, they're actually leveraging their capital because they all have cash reserves and they're collectively pooling those and actually having those managed as a fund in the communities in rate of return. They went out and in some of the areas that were a little, where especially international students were interested in taking courses, but obviously there weren't enough instructors necessarily in London, that they would hire you, London hire would hire the faculty you know, to be part of this consortium versus being employed by an individual institution. So, you know, this idea, that's one of the ways we've seen people respond to these scarcity is doing some of these things collectively um, because it just, you know, because it, now the challenge obviously is the demand, but if you can do things slightly asynchronously and with the right amount of coordination, it's a good way of leveraging stuff. You gotta be careful not to try to boil the ocean and go out there. We're gonna change everything collectively, but get into the habit of working collectively on smaller initiatives. You know, like that's what London Hire story to me, the reason I brought it up was they started with something small marketing and then they grew into the whole like if you had started out initially saying, look, we're gonna pool all your cash reserves and then go to the banks for it, they would have said no way. But you get them to work together. So like the one that strikes me, and, and maybe this dentist end put it, but in pulling the data from some of our previous research. I was a little surprised at how, maybe not surprised, but it just struck me, how gender biased aviation is, right? Like, so that, that would be one area where, it, why not collaboratively? You like, don't want it to be that way. Well, I know, I know. I, I'm not presuming it, but how, do you, you know, how could you collectively, especially given there are dollars out there for women in STEM, right, or girls, or whatever term you want, you know, could you collectively, for the aviation schools, try to tap into that by saying, we're collectively going to some of these foundations or these industry foundations and saying, look, you're not thinking of, you, you might not have thought of us, but if you have dollars for women in STEM, we're a good resource for that. And this might be a way to attack that. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think we, we do. I mean, all of us hit those groups. But for whatever reason. But collectively? Well, but not collectively. And that's where, that's and what's the organization? It's like these no. organizations, Abby, UAA, all of those, where instead of being competitors, we're colleagues. Now, are you, and one thing we know from going after foundation development dollars, it's always better to go collect it. Oh, for sure. Um, as opposed to, like, you know, it's like, okay, here's another ask for another women in STEM program, as opposed to, here's a strategy to get you know, women into aviation programs. It's a great route to staff, and da 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 um, And that's, you know, that's one of those things we do know that works is collective asset of in terms of overall initiatives. Uh, and I think that's where, for you know, if there's anything, I would, I do think there's an opportunity to talk to Jason, an opportunity more collaborative and more sort of redeploying of assets kind of approach. Because you know, uh, one thing you guys do have is you actually have assets, right? Uh, you know, and we're saying, we're doing some radical things. Like some of the institutions, and these are institutions that are, and I we advise against them, but some institutions that are really desperate for cash especially private ones, are thinking about selling their real estate portfolios and then leasing them back, right? Which is, you know, real estate's one thing. I think other assets make sense, but real estate's one where, especially if you're a non-for-profit, then the question of the tax burden comes in, right? On the flip side, I think one thing that I still am amazed at, how many things universities do themselves that they should let others do, right? I mean, this goes, I mean, you can name you can, I mean, I, when I was a college professor, I taught at a school called Davidson College down in North Carolina. That they still did student laundry. They still do, right? Just 
it makes no sense, right? But they, they had a whole laundry plan and a team of people they hired and I sort of sort of kept with the culture of the place. But there's so many things that universities own that in many ways they should allow others to, to manage more effectively because yeah, there's a bird business, right? And um, yeah, that's what strikes me across all of higher ed is how much universities hold on to for no other reason than they've always had. Thank you.